One thing I've loved seeing throughout my journey with 3D printing is the evolution of controller boards. My first ever printer conversion used a Ramps 1.4 in Arduino combo, which feels archaic compared to the many high quality options we have available now for just about any build you can imagine. It's been some time since we last covered a controller on this channel, and since then MakerBase has sent over a couple of their boards for us to use in printer upgrades. Today we're specifically diving into the MKS Skipper, a unique all-in-one clipper board which I'm installing into my KP3S for the Snake Oil XY 3S conversion. The MKS Skipper boasts an STM32 chip for controlling all of our hardware needs, alongside a rock chip that serves as our SOC or SOC, substituting the need for a Raspberry Pi by running the clipper host itself. So in today's video, we will unpack the MKS Skipper, covering the board specs and walking through the clipper host installation process. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. Since we somehow have not covered MakerBase in the past, let's briefly touch on their history. MakerBase has been around for over nine years at this point, and they're actually one of the first controller companies that I can remember in the 3D printing space. Their first release was the MKS Base back in 2014, which was based on the common Ramps Arduino RepRap setup, but integrated the two of them together into a single board. Many OEMs have MakerBase make boards for their printers, with the most common that I've seen over the years being the Robin or Robin Nano. Offhand, the Kingroom KP3S, Elegoo Neptune 2, and FL Sun SR are or have used variants of the MKS Robin Nano. A custom stripped down version of the skipper board we're looking at today is what's running inside of the new Chitty Tech Core XY printers. Moving on to the specs, as mentioned, the MKS skipper has been designed from the ground up to be a clipper board. There's an STM32 F407 on board for interfacing with the hardware, along with a rock chip RK3328 and one gigabyte of DDR3 memory for running clipper host, eliminating the need for a separate Pi. Starting on the left for the I.O., we have 12 or 24 volts power in, your heated bed, and up to three heater cartridge terminals with two replaceable fuses. On the bottom, there are dedicated accelerometer pins, a TS35 connector for the maker base clipper screen, one USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet, full-size HDMI, micro SD card for clipper host, and USB-C for optional USB host. On the bottom right, there is a dedicated CAN bus connection, which is something that I'm pretty excited about. We covered setting up CAN with Clipper a couple of months ago, and we had to use an external USB to CAN board to get CAN support. With the skipper, this comes baked into the board, and we have our CAN high, CAN low, voltage, and ground ready to be tapped into. Above that, there is a micro SD card slot for flashing the MCU, another USB-C connector for the MCU, and pin headers to connect a MAX31865 PT100 board. There are seven slots for step stick or Palulu style drivers that will allow you to connect up to eight stepper motors to the board. If you're wondering how that works, it's because two of the stepper motor ports are tied to the same driver, which I discovered during the Mercury 1.1 build is a pretty common thing. Next to the drivers, there are six fan ports, all with individually selectable voltages. Three are always on and three are controllable. Lastly, for ports towards the center, there are four thermistor, six end stop, and two LCD connectors. There are also quite a few pin headers in the center for things like sensorless homing, probe, and probe voltage selection. Additionally, there is an EMMC port that will allow you to use the MKS EMMC 8GB module. This replaces the need for a micro SD card and is supposed to be more reliable and give you quicker read-write speeds. I'm happy with all the connection options that this board has, but I do wish that it had onboard Wi-Fi. With the current 1.0 variant, you'll need a USB dongle if you plan on running this wirelessly. It isn't the end of the world, but if you're planning on using a USB webcam along with a USB ADXL and perhaps a screen that requires USB for power, then you'll have to unplug something or go with a separate USB hub. 
I'm not sure if it's possible with the current version of the skipper board, but I have seen an EMMC module that also has Wi-Fi included with it, which would be a really cool option if not for this, then at least for a future revision. For getting things up and running with this board, MakerBase does have some resources available in their GitHub. Here you'll find the pinout for the board, which will be very useful when building out a config. It may just be a me thing, but I did find the color choice to be a bit aggressive compared to some of the other manufactured diagrams I've looked at, especially the green and purple. Config wise, they do have one config set up for a Volron 2.4, which is at least a nice starting point. This config also contains instructions on how to flash Clipper to the MCU. There are instructions on how to flash the system image on the GitHub page, as well as a link to the Skipper wiki, which also covers this process. One thing I found a little odd is that a good amount of the information in the GitHub is in the wiki, but it's not a one-to-one, -one, so depending on what you're trying to do, you'll have to reference both sources. In my opinion, it would have made much more sense to combine the two into a single sheet instead of having some information scattered in two locations, as well as providing a PDF version of the documentation. As someone who has stumbled through quite a few printer builds over the years, I can say firsthand that quality documentation can be the difference between a really good experience and an incredibly frustrating one. This board is completely overkill for my KP3S and I still need to figure out how I'm going to mount it, but let's quickly get Clipper Host up and running on it. The process for flashing the image onto a micro SD card or the EMMC if you decide to go that route is the exact same once you use the EMMC to micro SD card adapter. In the GitHub repository, there are four different image files, which is a little bit confusing, but there is a changelog text file that shows you the latest version releases, so I downloaded the image with a matching file name. In addition to the image file, you'll need to download and install Belena Etcher, which is what we'll use to flash that file. Once installed, open Etcher and select the image file you downloaded along with your memory card before clicking flash to write the file. This took roughly 10 to 15 minutes and for some reason the first time I flashed the file, it actually failed when it got to the verification stage. I didn't make any changes and just went ahead and clicked flash again and the second time it completed without any issues. If you're running over ethernet, unplug the micro SD card, plug it into the skipper board and power it on. Clipper host will be successfully installed and you can continue on with setting up your config. If like me, you're using Wi-Fi, well, this is where the fun begins and I definitely went down a bit of a rabbit hole. According to the documentation, upon completion of the image flashing, there will be a file called WPA supplicant within the boot disk on the micro SD card. This is a fairly common file and I remember using this back when I was using Octoprint on a lot of my printers to set the SSID and password for your network. The issue is this file was not on the micro SD card under the boot section like the instructions claimed and I checked multiple times. I even went ahead and downloaded the previous version of the image file and flashed it to verify and it was also not there. I even jumped over to Windows to make sure that it wasn't something going on with my Mac and still that file did not show up on the micro SD card. MakerBase does provide a second method of getting the Wi-Fi set up, which is by connecting the board to your computer via a serial connection. So that's what I tried next. To do this, you plug the flashed micro SD card into the board, power it on and connect the USB-C host to your computer over USB. There are instructions on how to make this connect with PuTTY on Windows, but not for Mac. So I attempted this through terminal and used screen for the serial connection. This did work, but when I booted into the Armbian config menu to connect to the Wi-Fi, the terminal kept spamming enter and I couldn't navigate through it. I thought maybe this was something to do with my wireless keyboard, so I swapped to a USB keyboard I had in my closet and the exact same thing happened. At this point, I threw in the towel for my Mac and went over to my Windows PC and tried the process through PuTTY. I started by opening the device manager to get the COM port number for the USB connection. I then opened PuTTY, clicked serial, entered COM3 based on what I had found in my device manager and the baud rate provided by MakerBase of 1,500,000. The username is root or MKS and password is MakerBase. Here I was able to enter Armbian config, navigate to wireless and connect to my network. After a few moments, it popped up on my network and I could connect to Fluid and disconnect the USB-C cable. If I had started with Windows and the PuTTY method, I could have gotten this set up in like 10 minutes instead of at least an hour of a pretty frustrating experience trying to go through various things, figuring out what the heck was going on. 
Even after getting this set up successfully with that method, I dug further into it because I am way too stubborn and discovered that the oldest image file on that Google Drive, which was released back in 2022, when I flashed it to the micro SD card, did contain that WPA file that we've been looking for. I have no idea why that file wasn't on the most present version or the version before that, but this is a perfect example of the documentation making a difference between a smooth experience and one that is not. I like what the skipper board offers and think that as far as the hardware goes, there is a ton of IO making this a very viable option for a lot of printer builds and projects. But I do hope that this video saves some people frustration when it comes to the wireless connection because it just should not be such a complicated process. My hope is that MakerBase will clean up the Google Drive and take all of the older files and archive them into an older folder and just have the most recent, as well as spend some time digging into why that WPA file is not present when you flash any of those latest images. Until then, my current recommendation is just to use Windows and PuTTY to set it up via the USB serial connection. And that has been the MKS Skipper. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions and hopefully help you determine whether this is the correct piece of hardware for your next project. If I do hear back from MakerBase or get an update regarding their files and what's going on with the WPA wireless connectivity file, I will be sure to let you guys know in the comments below and I will do my best to actually pin a comment with that info. I can't wait to get the KP3S upgraded with all of the different mods that it's getting, and we will definitely have a future video covering all those things, so stay tuned for that. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.